Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr. Pillow, and I am pleased to welcome you to the Awesome Knots Rumble Scrim Show. This is where we take casting gameplay from the community, and uh, we talk about it. And uh, we tell you about you know, our thoughts and our analysis on it, and give, you, uh, and give you our two cents on it. Joining with me on this endeavor is the wonderful Uberancy. How are you doing, Uberancy? Hello. I'm doing good, and I cannot wait to cast more scrims and fun matches and professional matches and just, you know, good stuff. Fun to watch. Indeed, indeed. And if you were not aware, uh, we do have a massive social media presence at the moment. If you look below, right where I'm pointing, uh, we have Discord links, Twitter links, uh, Steam group links. This is all the good, great places to stay uh, on top of what's happening with Awesome Knots Rumble. And there's also the Awesome Knots Scrum Portal. We don't run it, but we do endorse the heck out of it. It is where you can can find the uh, and scrimmages to, to, to play yourselves instead of just watching them. And find teammates, find pickup games, find people to queue with. I really, really recommend checking out that Discord below, the Awesome Knots Scrum Portal. Uh, so, we're going to hop right into things. Uber and see, I believe we got two games to cast today, do we not, my friend? I believe we do, so we'll just get right into the first uh, match here, and I'll handle the draft real quick. So, first match is going to be YOLO 6E6672, coordinates as I like to call them, Firin on the blue team. And on the red team we've got Pushkin, Jambo, and Badass Ketchup. This match is going to be on Aglon, and we've got the first bands being Lux uh, and Swiggins, followed by Leon and then Penny. And then the first pick being Sentry, and the counter picks being Naw and Vinny. And then for the next pick for the red team, we've got Scoop. So you've already got Sentry Scoop, very strong combo, and especially with that next pick coming up, which I'll get to in a second. Final bands are going to be Ksenia and Froggy G, respectively. And the final picks are going to be Clunk and Max Focus, who I've actually not really seen much of. I don't think I've ever casted a match with Max Focus in it, so that's going to be interesting. Indeed, and I did want to remind everybody in the chat, we are, Kurt, as usual, we are doing our bet system. This is where you can type who you think is going to win, the red team or the blue team, into the chat. Uh, guess correctly to be eligible for a giveaway after the match. Uh, all you got to do is type red or blue. Uh, you have until the scene transitions to the gameplay to get your guesses in. And so, oh, uh, you know, try, try and uh, get, get those guesses going. Red or blue, XD. Uh, looking at these comps, uh, we have uh, kind of an old school comp running on uh, the blue team. Uh, got Sentry, Scoop, Clunk. They got the massive CC, the big boy tanks that like to go in, just smack some people around and do and quite a bit of damage. And uh, on the red side of things, you got one that's a bit more kind of concurrent with the meta. You got the, you know, the Vinny and Nom running around. You got the kind of surprise pocket pick of Max Focus. And I think it was actually really intelligent pickup here because is uh, he can really kite these tanks. It's Agalon. He can really, you know, trap them in slow bubble quite easily. And the scene illumination, that massive range piercing DPS that he has, it's going to be really easy to find all the ticks of it on the blue team. You, you, you know, he's... I, I expect Badass Ketchup's damage number after this match to be ridiculous. It should be, like, dead minimum six digits. I would be incredibly surprised if it wasn't. Between that, you got things like Finny's going to have an easy time finding the weakened cloud that just it really puts a hamper on the blue team. Like, the poke, the harass, and the uh, harass from the red team is something that's going to, I think, secure them the win. But you look at the blue team, and you're like, yeah, okay, but I mean, you got Sentry and Clunk, you know, Black Hole, and, and to Hammer, and to Explosion, you know. It's so, I think it's really easy to think of the, like, the, the blue team as having the stronger comp, but when it actually plays out, red team is just, uh, they're, they're not going to get caught in these Black Holes. It's going to be easy for them to play around. The moves of the blue team are going to be very, very telegraphed, and they're going to have things that they can do for counter-initiation. So, um, uh, 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 how, how are you feeling now about these drafts? Well, something to note here is this is a 3.4 draft, so Clunk actually hasn't gotten any of his insane buffs for uh, stuff like Bite, especially around prices. 
and so he's going to be expensive a lot of the blue team has some pretty expensive builds i mean like it depends on how you build sentry as well but it's going to take some money in order to get the blue team to peak performance plus with the weekend cloud and with max focuses damage i feel like the blue team might have a bit of a rough time it is dagalon so you know you've got plenty of initiators that can get the invis maybe do some work with that but the same thing applies to someone like jambo playing vinny and able to use that spike dive and with silence dive or weekend cloud and just go in and then get out without much trouble so honestly i think this is in favor of the red team a little bit but we'll actually have to see how it goes indeed it's the sort of thing like if the red team like slips up obviously they get extremely punished but i think that despite the fact that there are a lot less girthier than the blue team the blue team is going to be pressured back this whole game without a doubt red team is going to run circles around them because you know you get nah who just automatically runs circles around everyone anyways and you got Benny that's like keeping them blinded, keeping them pressured. And then you got Max Focus, like you can't proceed down mid without Max safely, you know, dealing massive damage to all of them. That said, we're going to go ahead and get into this game here. And uh, and uh, I am at the 12 second mark, my friend. Would you like to give us a countdown? Absolutely. Oh, all I, right. I transitioned to the wrong second. thing. Wait, but, did you, okay, what'd, so, you, what'd you screw up? Okay, okay so anyways, uh, 12 second mark. All right, at 12 second mark, three, two, one, go. And we are off on the red team. We have Badass Ketchup, uh, that's the Cold Blood Killer playing your max focus. You have Pushkin playing the Gnaw, and you have Jambo playing the Vinny on the blue side. You have 6E playing Clunk, and you have Furran playing Sentry, and you have Yellow playing the Scoop. And uh, uh, immediately, Yellow is going to come out with the Binance. We're going to see a fight come out. We're going to see the uh, see a bunch of abilities get traded. Yellow almost about to die right there before even 30 seconds pass. Now Furran's in a bad spot. He's going to get caught up by the Weed Slam. 6E's trying to get the explosion, and, and Pushkin gets out at just one bar. Now he's oh going to be going God, down for the bite. Massacre. Okay, so, as I said, these guys are, like, their comp just is outclassed here. They just get circles ran around them. They found the explosion, and they still couldn't catch the Gnaw, because Gnaw... Jambo's just gonna oh work in. He's got so much death already! Yeah, he's just spike-dived into a scoop. Well, that had bindings ready at his turret, so, I mean... Not exactly the best of decisions there. Uh, and Quality now, professional gaming. Yeah, and they are going to get some pressure off on the top lane as a result. Uh, so, Uberancy, what is the primary play that the blue team needs to make? Like, what should they be doing in these team fights, and how should they be handling the uh, time bubble, the scene, the illumination, and the gnaw of all things? Well, first of all, I noticed that they kind of split up a little bit in that first sort of, you know, just big old brawl there, and, you know, Scoop was really low, and then Clunk went in after Scoop, and he got picked off. And then Fur got picked off before that as well, but Clunk's actually going to pick up a frag here on Cold Blooded Killer. And then Yolo is going to pick up a frag on Jambo with that asterisk. Maybe he made a spell mistake, I don't know. But that's two nice skills for the blue team here. But you know, just they've definitely got a lot of potential to uh, get these frags with the amount of initiation they have. And just with Clunk, you know, even with 3.4 Clunk, Clunk or Nah might actually go down here. But oh, 6 he's in a terrible spot, but the bite is going to kill. Oh, it's gonna kill Pushkin, but the Weedling or VOT or something of the sort is gonna be able to pick up the kill on Clunk. And Cold Blooded Killer's gonna take such a ton of damage. The hammer already hits him, so that an extra range hammer damage is not going to affect him. The second time it comes around. Now Yolo's kind of hurt. There's a nice hammer. He's gonna get some healing from that as well. There's there's a lot of stuff already. We've already got seven kills this game, and it might may, might be eight. It doesn't look like that hammer's gonna miss, and Yolo's gonna have to back off. But he, with Cold Blooded Killer, he's just going oh. in. He's gonna go down. He's but at go what down to Yolo cost? Sword Strike, but then Jambo's gonna pick up the kill on Yolo. Why? There's so many people dying. What's happening? Uh, it feels like there's definitely a bunch of oaks. Just Jambo just gonna be caught <laughs> out on the lane rotation. And does not see it coming. He thought he just had a safe flank there, and you know they were just waiting on him and just completely erase him. Now Pushkin's in a black hole, but there's not gonna be any follow up. He is gonna get some residual damage. Actually, gonna get Pushkin to half. Taking a look over these builds, we see something kind of interesting going on with the Gnaw. We see, um, actually, DOT damage first pickup and then life steal. What do you think about that first pickup of DOT damage? And what do you think about, like, for example, the microfilm that's coming out on Sentry right now? Well, when you've got someone like Finny who's got a very wide AoE, that's kind of, you know, a sort of, almost, I'd like to say, ease of use right click. I mean, the damage is very good once you get some upgrades for it, and then, you know, you need to aim it a little better if you, you say, get uh, double spikes on spike dive. But that's not going to be too hard for Sentry here for uh, 
Who's playing Sentry? Fur. It's not going to be too hard for Fur in order to get a fully charged black hole like right that right there, but Jambles going to be able to dive out before 6 e can get that uh, clunk nuke. But he's going to have to run away here. He's going to get a bite on Jambo. Jambo just trying to go in, maybe take some damage, but Pushkin's going to take even more. He's going to pick up the kill on YOLO, though. Jambo is going to pick up the kill on YOLO, not Pushkin. Pushkin almost dies, but he's able to get out. And more death, more destruction. Already 11 kills before the 4 minute mark, which is pretty insane, I got to admit. But we've got Fur going to try to shield that spike dive. Not quite successful. There's the black hole. It's going to do a lot of damage. Pushkin's very hurt. Jambo's going to take a solid 400 damage. The bite! The bite from 6 -E. Gonna get another kill on Pushkin too. I guess Na just, uh, I guess Clunk just really likes the way Na tastes. Maybe like, you know, some sauteed Na, whatever race Na is, but either way, we've got Cold Blood Killer. He's trying to, try to, you know, throw out those time bubbles and, you know, put in the work, which is actually bad as SketchUp. Try not to be confused for this very elite name, but Cold Blood Killer throwing out the taunts and he's trying to get invis plays here. He's got the time bubble here, so he could try to go in, maybe use the scene elimination. It looks like that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna avoid that bite, get the nice juke. And there's the time bubble. That's a nice, hefty slow. I'm not exactly sure how much it is. 50%. 50% slow that goes through walls and all sorts of stuff can be very effective if applied correctly. And now he's just going to be able to clear bottom while the blue team is just jumping around. Trying to get some stuff done. First, going to get the teleport. He's going to get above the red team here. He's going to maybe try and catch a black hole at this uh, jump pad here. Pushkin's going to be able to steal that creep though. Oh, Jambo. Cold-blooded killer. Jambo's actually going to get caught in the black hole. And he's going to try and spike dive out, but he's going to be caught and get killed by the black hole damage. But first, going to go down in retaliation as well as 6e. Two for one for the red team here. And they're going to have some potential to push here because it's only scoop here. And you've still got that gnaw and max alive. So they got some serious push potential right now off of those frags. Indeed. And, oh, and Yolo, he's not, he, he's not really in a position to defend. Biden still has another seven seconds. And, you know, there's so many droids. He's up against, you know, Max Focus, who just pretty much completely outkites the defense that Yellow has to offer outside of the usage of his abilities. And it's just not a good scenario. They're getting those turrets really chipped. And, like, the, I think the amount of push that the red team gets off kills is higher than the amount of push that the blue team gets off kills. So, like, these trades, and especially considering, you know, all the different upgrades that, you know, the red team can get access to, such as Amp. Rabbit Teeth, Weaken Cloud, the massive damage that Spike Dive has. You know, these trades are in favor of the red team, not the blue team at the moment. We do have some interesting pickups. Oh, they're going to get caught in the black hole, and there's that black hole in into explosion combo that we were talking about. That badass ketchup is going to be unquestionably killed right there on the top lane. And now they already got the droid set up, and they might get some push off of this. Uh, we got the... When Binding is coming out, it's act the Holy Cup is actually going to keep the teammates up. There's the explosion. He's going to get out just a bar. But at what cost? As 16 now goes down to the DOT. I think that was actually more or less a good example of what happens when you don't buy enough damage. Because look at this guy. He's got one stage of explosion. But, you know, he's buying all these utilities. Like, Boots, BKM, Snare. Snare makes a difference here. Yellow going to be taken out on the lane rotation. Just kind of overstaying his welcome. Getting too distracted with the gnaw that he doesn't realize that the other areas are denied. But like, okay, like the Boots and BKM don't, aren't really making a difference in these team fights. Furin gonna find Jambo again right in the pocket. Both teams being extremely aggressive, dang. Pushkin uh, is gonna get denied there. But the point is, is like, now he's got a second stage of explosion damage. If he had had that earlier, that would've been a kill and he would've been alive. Like, damage is your best defense. And, and just kind of relying on all these utilities that didn't really make a difference. That is a nice black hole, but it's not gonna be enough. And they are gonna find the follow-up that would've been a simple kill if they had just been a little bit more faster. Kind of reacted a little bit faster. Unfortunately, they did not. Um, and now we have uh, the blue team. We've got Clunk waiting up at the top bunker. He's kind of convinced that they're not going to fall for it. Uh, they're not even going to try and push it a little bit. Not going to try to find the like auto attack chip in, for example, with the Clunk. And they're just going to rotate up top. They're a little bit separated. I feel like red team is a little bit better together now. Except now they're going in. They're actually going to find Jambo. we got a massive black hole. But the explosion is going to be a whiff. And the black hole is going to be a whiff. That could have been a sick gank. But they did not get the black hole in the right moment. And just completely mistimed everything. Jambo is going to be getting out of bar. Uh, Bass Ketchup is creating space. Bushkin is going in at 1 HP. That was not his best decision. He's going to be taken down to 6C. Which is going to be eliminating the amount of pressure that... 
uh, badass catch-up got off on his kill of Furin. Now 6 e, he's getting incredibly low. He's going to have to go back. He does have his creeps there. He can go bind him. He can get a full health relatively fast. He is clunk. But and while he's doing that, Jambo is going to manage to uh, take out the bottom turret. And now they're in a position where they can really easily just sneeze on that top turret. There's not really much the blue team is going to be able to do to contest that at this point. It's, it's not a matter of if the turret goes down. It's a matter of when. But they will, before that win happens, get some more push on the top lane. Oh, badass Pushkin going to get caught in the black hole. Blue team does not want to commit to that. They know they get, they will get counter-initiated on incredibly hard. And now we have the entirety of red team going to be dodging the hammer on down the bottom lane. And looking for lane rotations, we get an invisible Vinny. He's not exactly sure what to do with it, but the Vines gets caught out. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Scoop is going to get collapsed on but still be full health because Scoop and, uh... Black hole onto Pushkin. They actually might find this, but 6E does not go in on that for some reason. And instead, he's trying to scare Jambo off. But now they find Badass Ketchup instead. They're going to take him out. Arguably better. And uh, now Jambo is going to get caught out again. This is going to be two for nothing. And it's like they saw that play and knew not to use their stuff on Pushkin. I don't know how. But, uh... Uh, now, two for nothing. We should see some big push. They might possibly take a top turret off of this now if they act quickly. Uh, Pushkin does have two lanes to defend. They already got rid of those droids and they got a, a wave of droids escorted up. Pushkin is not even contesting it. Yeah, so they take this turret 100%. It's, uh, Pushkin seemed really convinced that they were going to take out that bottom turret. Now Max Focus is in lane. They're going to have access to this Abyss. Blue Team's comp with these Stealth Orb is extremely scary. And they have map control right now, which means they can time it. I believe it spawns once every minute and 20 seconds. So, they they can really... Oh, but they're going to whip all their abilities. There is the bindings, but there's the scene illumination. Oh, there's the man. spike dive. There's the gnaw. That's a oh, double kill. Man. And Sentry's going to teleport home. That was such a sad whiff. Because I was just saying about how amazing, you know, their comp was with the stealth. But then, ah, oh, that's that's got to be frustrating. That's got to feel bad. Burin is getting really aggressive, trying to create some space. He might get body blocked here. He's very fortunate that Jambo didn't find that spike dive. Now, the blue team is in a very bad position. I've, even after they got that momentum swing back, they just already lost it. What do they need to be doing right now to stay in this game with Rancy? Uh, not with their abilities might be a good start, but I'm not trying to be mean here, but they have been missing those abilities like in those team fights. Like they get the Infis, but then they don't land the black hole or the explode or even both that it's just they can't get the kills because there's a lot of squishy characters on the red team here. Like the character with the most health is actually non-Finny or tied for it with like less than 2,000 each anyways. So the blue team can absolutely just get these kills. They just need to not whiff and there's the not whiff I was talking about. Cold-blooded killer gonna go down to the fur. Or bad as sketcher that, if you want to be specific. He can teleport. But then, oh, the teleport, and then the black hole is going to pick up the next kill on Pushkin as well, giving that a double kill for the blue team here. They're going to be able to push this top turret. It's only Jambo. Those droids are blinded though, and there's the black hole just going to try and kill those droids, but Jambo's going to go into the spike dive and do a lot of damage. But the blue team honestly can just kind of body this turret for a little bit. Not going to take too much health off of it though. They might want to focus their efforts on the bottom turret here, but the red team is going to start respawning here. Max Focus already back as well as Pushkin right now. Just drop it in, they're gonna buy some upgrades if they have the money for it, and they're gonna come back. Here comes Max Focus, Cold Blood Killer coming in with the scene illumination with that extra duration and the uh, sort of burst shot after uh, after using it at the end. It's gonna do a lot of damage, like Max Focus's damage is just really great against a team like this as well, because they're all gonna be kind of standing next to each other, you know, lined up. Get that get the collateral with the scene illumination. There's the explode coming in. It's only gonna hit Pushkin though, but the bind is gonna do so much and Yolu's gonna pick up the frag with the bindings with the cold blooded killer getting chased back. I keep calling him cold blooded killer and not bad as catcher, but that name is just so amazing. Well, but I wanna point gonna... out uh, Ferno is in a position where he could have used this beacon. I'm pretty sure they would have actually picked up a double kill if he had been gonna do that, because he had even been staying back. He might have taken a residual bit of damage or something. I don't think it was DOT. But now Jambo gonna get caught out. There's the snare fight into explosion. He is barely gonna survive that though. He does get that weakened cloud. In the meantime, Badass Catcher, he's actually going in wow, 1v3. He all finds Yolo. And he's getting good damage and he's going back in. He actually might pick this up. He's gonna get by though. Will he manage to find it? He's gonna manage to pick up the creeps and do half the damage oh, it and kill him with one. Oh, there it killer. is. Oh, oh my god. The big plays. Cold Blooded Killer gonna secure the team wipe. Potentially the game here with this bottom turret getting melted here. Wow, I think 
I think Baddest Ketchup might have just pulled the play of the century. Better put that in the highlight reel, and you've got just the man for it. Max Focus here, and Yolo's just sitting in spawn trying to buy some upgrades. You got that damage on Hammer, but it's not going to be enough. He's, he's stuck by himself defending. You've got that slow mo. He's going to take too much damage. Like a spike dive fear will kill Yolo or the Plant Slam. He's going to have to go back, and that's the game. That is the game for Jambo Pushkin and Badass Ketchup, and they're going to be able to pick up the easy win after that insane play from uh, Max Focus and get the victory at 13 minutes in. Literally a 1v3 wipe and then just wins the game off of it. I I, I yeah. gotta say, I'm impressed. It's the That's name, sick. Man. It's, it's the power of the name. It's Cold just too blooded killer. <laughs> oh. Like, how, I don't think we've had this happen in any of our Rumble, Rumble streams before. Like, you can usually tell when a game is getting close to ending. This was literally, like, they hadn't even taken the back turret. Then just out of nowhere... Bad SketchUp pulls out a 1v3 triple and then they win off it. Just like that. Like, that simple. Like, <laughs> okay then, that happened, you know? Yeah, that, that was that was a very frag-heavy match, guild-heavy match, death-heavy match, however you want to say it. But, you know, frag just sounds cooler, bro, for, well, for all those Quake players out there. Shoutouts. But, you know, you've got like 31 kills throughout the entirety of a 13-minute game and just like the insane... Pretty much triple kill from uh, Baddest Sketch up there, Cold Blooded Killer, and he's just going to be able to put in all that work. He's got all that damage on Scene Illumination. He, he's also picked up uh, the extra damage on your auto attack on Bloodlight after you uh, don't use it for a few seconds. So he can go in with the Scene Illumination in the slow mo, use the Scene Illumination, and while he's using it because of the duration of uh, the Scene Illumination, he can use his auto attack afterwards and do like. 250 damage in one auto attack shot plus the 400 damage burst from semen, semen elimination even though he only hit clunk at about i'd say the 12 minute mark he only hit clunk with like a short portion of the uh semen elimination but he did like a thousand damage just with like the last 20 percent of semen elimination plus an auto attack shot plus the slow-mo and more auto attack shots it's like so much bloody damage against tanks it's ridiculous and it, like it really ended up shining, you know, in that one v three. As we said, the, um, the 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 attacks of the blue team are really telegraphed. You know what their combo is. Like it, it, it's like one of the old school comps was like Leon Frog Scoop. You know, you still see that sometimes, but it's like you know what's gonna happen. Uh, you know, like like yeah, you're screwed if you get caught by that tongue into them, and like you get caught by the black hole into a uh, explosion. But, like, the reason these comps fell out of style is because you know what they're going to do if, like, you see, like, you know, this, the clunk just following the sentry around and the sentry's got black all around. You know what he's going to try and do. And it's just one of those comps where, like, if you, it, 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 regardless of the player's skill that you're facing, if you get caught out by it, you really don't have anyone but yourself to blame. And, and we saw that ended up. When Bass catch up, win nine one v three. You know, it was not only that scene elimination is incredible pick against all those tanks, but the fact that you know all he really had to do was make sure he did not get bitten, so snared or black hole. He, those didn't happen, and so he picked up a triple. It was that simple for him. Yeah, pretty much. Like that. That's the the only like advice for the blue team. Really, it's just like they they had a couple of like they landed a good chunk of their abilities, but they had a couple of pretty bad whiffs with the uh, black hole and nuke to be more specific. A couple of those just missed when they really should have hit, and it would have definitely got like gotten them a double kill in the team fight. But then because they missed, they have to back out, and they potentially like they potentially lose one of their teammates as well. Right. But either way, insane plays from Battle Sketchup and. Well, from everyone, really, it was a, lots of frags that match, but it was a good, it was a good match to watch. But we've got one more for this uh, stream today, so maybe we should close this up and get ready for the next one. All right, we will be back very shortly, my friends.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. This is the Awesome Knowledge Rumble Scrim Show. With me again is the wonderful Uberancy. Uberancy, are you hanging in there, my friend? I am hanging in there, I suppose, and I am ready for the next match. But before we get into that match, we've got a couple of, uh, I guess, a couple of plugs here that we want to talk about and something that everybody likes. But first, we need to talk about the Skullier Showdown coming up. Do you have uh, any information on that? Yes, uh, uh, two stream shows ago, we announced our Skulder Showdown Tournament. This is a 1v1 Skulder Tournament tournament uh, that we are running on April 1st and April 2nd. I promise this isn't an April Fool's prank. It's uh, a sequel to the tournament last year, now under the Rumble branding. Uh, we got a bunch of cool stuff for it. Uh, we got $50 uh, for the first place winner, $30 for the second prize. Bunch of DLC for as prizes for everyone who makes the playoffs. Open qualifiers on April 1st. You can... Sign up at tinyurl.com slash scolder showdown signups. Um, and visit our Steam group down below for more information regarding the Scolder Showdown Tournament. Um, it's going to be freaking awesome. You guys should check it out. We will have the stream of the play of uh, the tournament on April 2nd at, I believe, 1 p.m. Eastern, GMT minus 5. That's uh, 6 p.m. UK time. And uh, yeah, it's going to be totally freaking cool. So you guys should give it a go. And Uber, I say, I believe uh, you're you're stepping up to the plate. And uh, yeah, I, I just for just just for fun, I've uh, I entered the tournament. So hey, if you enter the tournament and you get seated against me, then that's a free win. So feel free to join up and just stomp my face. If you guys think that uh, you're not good enough to sign up for the tournament, yeah, I, I join. I Don't worry, you. I'm a fr I'm a free win. Take your chances. I promise you. <laughs> I've played like I've played like. 15 matches on skull so just you just gotta hope you get lucky all right but something that uh you are better than than skulder at is i hear you're really good at trivia that's a lie but either way we have a trivia question coming up and everybody well not everybody but most people should know how this works we have a trivia sort of a random question about awesome knots or awesome knots or lore or anything of the sort or just you know random stuff that you just might know about otherwise get your google ready and get ready to answer this trivia question which is once i pull it up here in the lore this is the question in the lore of awesome knots what devastating phenomena took place in the year 3258 and that's as vague as, it, as it's going to be that that's the question right there there's no other details you're just gonna have to figure it out from that in the lore, what devastating phenomena took place in the year 3258? Now, it's about Awesome Knots. Could be anything in Awesome Knots. Could be like a uh, backstory, or it could be like something about a character. Or it could be just like random flavor text on something. Anything like that. So if you could figure that out, then you get to win a piece of uh, Awesome Nuts DLC. And it is not the, if the uh, is it the second AI war that the game takes place during? It is not the second day I wore because that is 3587, I believe. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and toss out the possibility. You know, I'm not saying you should guess it because that's the answer, but who knows? That could be the year that they shut down the matchmaking servers. <laughs> I'm really curious. Kuhn is in the chat. Is Kuhn going to... I mean, he's a developer. He should know this. He's totally eligible. We'll My give him the taxes. He's, yeah, what devastating phenomenon took place? Uh, Kuhn's taxes. That's the answer, everybody. Uh, Kuhn wins the... Uh, piece of awesome nuts dlc uh congratulations coon yeah you, you, you did it kid. That, that that's the next pay date for ronimo staff <laughs> <laughs> uh new king of serona no not not 
not a not yet. The neck beard shaving. Oh, I'm loving these answers, but they're not quite uh, right yet. That should we, is should, that not how you spell devastating? Yo, I'm gonna Google this. Oh no, it's an A. It's an A uh, instead of the second E there. So yeah, it is spelled wrong. Aww. Devastating. But uh. Ripperuni. Should we should we give him a hint or uh, no? Uh, hmm. Well, I'm, th I'm thinking of a good hint. Alright, so the answer is in the flavor text of an upgrade. And yeah, I, that's that's what a lot of the answers come from, but not most of the time. But yeah, that, that's that's pretty much it. And now uh, that we just got everybody to crash uh, the Knots Builder website. Haha. <laughs> Yeah, we, we just we just single-handedly crashed uh, Gamepedia, uh, Wikia, uh, Knots Builder. It's all it's all gone. They're all dead. Sorry, our mistake. I like how everyone's guessing the AI war, but we already said it's not the AI war. Uh, no, clearly it's not. It, it's an AI war in an alternate universe. Clearly. Oh, it's true. We didn't guess alternate universes. Oh shit. Oh, I swear. Whoops. No, it's bad. Bad. I can't do that. This is supposed to be family friendly. Well, that's Fifth one devastating of... phenomena for 2017. Oh, damn. Called out. Oh, there's I, another I, I devastating phenomena for 2017. Oh. 26 Star Wars film is released. <laughs> no, no, you guys, you guys, you guys are guessing the wrong AI war. It's clearly the 12th, okay? The twelfth AI war. Okay, do these guys need another hint? I can't believe Kuhn doesn't know this. Oh my gosh. Well, I guess he wants to keep it fair because he might he might know it, but Oh uh, yeah, not yeah, very convenient, Kuhn. Uh-huh. Okay, pal. Hmm. 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 <laughs> That's your hint. That's the, going. The flavor to text is on a knot that we saw in the previous game. That rules it down to one of six here. I'm, I'm pretty. So you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to. You know, go to that past broadcast. We'll find the viewer link, and yeah, you'll be able. You'll be able to figure out. It's one of the, there's. There were six knots in the last uh, viewer link. We're not gonna just straight up tell you, but it was one of the knots that was played, not any of the band knots. So one of those six knots in the flavor text of one of their upgrades, like that. That's only like. I don't know, 18 times, that's 18 times 6, so it's just like, uh, what is math? Don't worry about it. Is it 108? I think there's 108 different upgrades there, so, you know, out of one of those 108 upgrades is where the flavor text, where it states what we're looking for here. We don't really want to have to give more hints because you've already got it pretty narrowed down, and I mean, you got to work on your Google Foo, man, or I mean, like, if you're a weirdo, Bing Foo, I guess. See, I, I knew you were a trivia master. Huh. Oh yeah, trivia master. I can Google stuff. Oh hell yeah. Me two one XC. I'm gonna take that. That's that's close enough. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That's right. Me two one XT. The I'll just uh, explain what the answer is right here. The answer is drone swarms. Max's Focus's flying camera upgrade is where the flavor text uh, is, and the flavor text mentions that there has been that it has been freed from the rebellious AI since the devastating drone swarms of 3258. So Max focuses upgrades. He was in the last uh, last match, so you know, you gotta work on your Google Foo if you weren't able to get it this time, but hey, congratulations to Meep21XT. You're gonna get a piece of Awesome Nuts DLC. I don't know exactly what it is, but congratulations, you did it. Woo! All right, so with that, uh, if you're disappointed that you couldn't uh, get the right answer to that, go. One more chance to win that piece of DLC. And the reason is because we got another match of Awesome Lots the Cast. And it is Silver Jelly Jazz 123C versus Spade, Dave W, and Sienna Humpa. And again, guys, guess who you think is going to win? Into the chat. You have until the scene transitions to the gameplay to get your guesses in. Just type red or blue. And you. And after the match, someone who guesses correctly will win a piece of deal Awesome Lots DLC. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at these comps. Uh, this was played on patch 3.4 and it and the red team is going to ban out Durple, Leon, and Ix and pick up Genji, Jelly, excuse me, Genji, pick up Jelly. They're going to pick up Jelly. Pick Jelly is now a knot in this game. Oh, Confirmed. how scary. That'd be an underpowered knot, haha, <laughs> XD.
But uh, oh, Genji, man. Penny, and Vinny, and Spike, and the Blue Team is going to ban out Juco, Naw, Scoop, and pick up Swiggins, Froggy G, and Coco Nebulon. Uh, Uber Ansel, how are you feeling about these teams, my friend? Did you, did you just call him Chuko? No, I, I said I Chuko. Not, I, I will not stand for that. That's, that's, you're going too far. Chuko. I'm done. Stop. Okay, anyways, so regarding these drafts, it's ribbits. You've got a very, uh, almost kind of a very vertical sense with that middle jump pad there, as well as it being a, a, one of the more balanced maps in this game, as well as having a proper solar boss, which you can kill for uh, health, experience, all that good yummy stuff. And, you know, it's a pretty traditional map, and there's some knots that really shine on this map, like Durple, Yuri, Ted. And, you know, that's the main reason for the Durple band there, because he's just so strong on this map. But with these picks here, you've got Genji. Genji is definitely like an A to a, like an A to S tier knot, like in terms of competitive. Like, he is very potent. It's just like instant two second lockdown, plus the sh shield, and plus a decent auto attack, you know, with piercing is good stuff. Very good knot. And then, you know, you've got Penny and Vinny who have been proving themselves to be very potent in the meta lately. Well, uh, on Spade Dave W and Sini's team, I don't know if I pronounced it right, but on their team, you've got a lot of lockdown, actually, and you've got the Froggy with the stun, so you've got initiation and plenty of damage on Tornado. Coco Ball is going to have some nice knockback if you decide to get the upgrade, or it could just be very low cooldown damage. And Spade's got the lockdown with the uh, Anchor Dive and Drop. Going to be very potent uh, killing potential, but they're a little lacking in the push. Indeed they are. And one of the things I, I, I'm seeing here is... Uh, is Okay, so... Swiggins, Frog, and Coco, they all go in. Monarch Blessing gets Jelly and uh, Jazz123 to survive those in those initiations that come on from Spade and his incredible team. And, uh, you know, they're going to take a lot of damage, but Monarch Blessing is going to keep them in that. And if he can time those blessings right, uh, you know, post team fight, I mean, you got uh, the Pulse, the Pounce, the Spike Dive all coming out there. That just melts Coco. It mostly melts uh, Swiggins, and it melts Frog if Splash Dash is used. So I think if uh, Red Team uh, is just careful with the blessings and pops their abilities at the right time, like, like the way I always like to say this is like if both teams play at the same level, then the Red Team wins because the blessing is going to decide these fights. And then like, what is a Coco going to do after cooldown? And you know, you know, Red Team has their damages ready, and uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, like Pulse and Spike Dive it is a kill on. And Coco. And throughout this analysis here, I didn't even mention the cocoon. Like, think about that. I didn't even mention the cocoon. I described how they were had clear, defined kill conditions without even mentioning the fact that they have one of the best initiations in the game and can essentially make a fight 2v3 for two seconds. Like, tell me that it's not incredibly scary. They have the potential of having two silences. Like, the weakened cloud. I think that this is really going to go in Red Team's favor right here. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree with that as well. Like, the Red Team's, like, sort of team is just more, well, it's more meta right now. Like, you've got Genji's always been really good, to be fair. And then, you know, Penny and Vinny are very strong damage dealers. Penny has the push potential. Since this is 3.4, her insane gun auto attack is still there. And, you know, you've got Silence Dive, Weakened Cloud, and lots of damage on Vinny. All sorts of great stuff, and plenty of push, as well as kill potential, and, uh, you know, area control, and, you know, denial and counter-initiation. Pretty much, they got the works. Like, they could do what they want. So, unless the blue team here can get some, like, Spay's incredible team can just get some crazy outplays, uh, uh, this is definitely in favor of uh, red team here. Yeah, they have to They have to really be careful on the team fights that they pick. They have to find people that are by themselves, find them over incentive, catch people off on the lane rotations. They cannot take a clean 3v3 team fighter. They will lose. I agree with that, but either way, we should get to this match, don't you agree? Let's go ahead. I am at the 12 second mark, my friend. Would you like to give us a countdown? Absolutely. All right, 12 second mark. Three, two, one, go. And we are off on the red team. We have Jas 3 c playing the Vinny. We have uh, uh, Jelly playing the Penny. And we have Silver playing the Genji on the blue team. We have Spade playing the Swiggins. We have Sienna playing the Coco. And we have Dave W. Dave W. Frog. We didn't even mention that. It's done. Dave W. Dashes no. all day. And there's the Dave W. Dash right off the jump pad. They done. It's that simple. 
Oh yeah, definitely. But we've got base abilities because you know you still have to buy your abilities and all that garbage. I am 3.4. So you know, first droids are coming out. Here comes the initiation from Dave W. But the cocoon, you gotta love it, is going to cancel that uh, tornado, stop the red team from any harm. With a little bit of uh, you know some abilities coming out here and there, some right clicks, some left clicks. You know, a little bit of damage. There's the pounce on Dave W. But not too much single damage from uh, anyone here, except for maybe Penny with some uh, nice combos or froggy but you know then you have to catch someone out so really it's just going to be a lot of team initiations hoping to get a kill and you know outplay the enemy team with silver being a little low here he's getting chased by dave w we have the dash but he's not going to go in with it he's going to get out instead might be the smart play there so that because he might get a genji kill but then he will probably die in exchange with silver being super low he's going to teleport out here comes some attempted initiation from spade jelly is in a bit of a pickle he's going to be able to walk back to the turret though Oh, but gets Ooh. a Cocoa Ball to the face. Knocks it could have been first blood well. if they reacted to that in time. Yeah, but, but Penny's really good at countering knockback due to her uh, pretty, in my opinion, pretty stupid uh, like quadruple jump. It's really wonky with knockback sometimes. But Dave W is actually super hurt. Gonna be able to dash out though. Tell me crazy, I'm pretty back. sure that first spike Dave found. That was almost a nice frag on the lane rotation, but Dave got the, the uh, creep in time. But, oh, that pulse, actually, this, that's going to have to wait a second. There's going to be the marketplace, there's going to be the anchor hook right in front of the turret. There's going to be a splash dash up. Red team's going to take bottom up. Uh, blue team's going to have to fall back and heal. But uh, when Dave got initially caught in front of that turret, I'm pretty sure Jazz actually missed that first spike dive, and then they got out with, like, a bar. So that's got to feel bad. I have to rewatch to be sure, but I'm, like, almost positive. It was, like, right in front of it. It was like he was actually trying to get the people that were going to be coming in to save Dave. They were just, like, abandoning, and then Dave's like, okay, never mind. They didn't kill me and just kind of walked out for free. Yeah, I, I... You know, sometimes that's just shenanigans you have. It's just... I don't know, I'm trying to think of a witty response, but screw that. Let's just talk about builds instead. We've got damage coming out uh, from Spade for the Anchor Dive. Well, they're actually, they might have to take for the solo boss. Oh, he does. Oh. Okay, this is going to be a big fight. This is going to be the first blood. I'm not sure. I think I saw someone's health spike up. It was actually incredibly hard to tell. It was really close. But uh, no first blood there. That came really close. Like That was, again, the Monarch Blessing. Just saving the Genji's life there. He was hooked down, collapsed on. He manages to get out. He's already got a stage of spiritual cooking. And, okay, so we already see damage coming out on Penny and Vinny. They know the roles here. You got Chrome File, you got Star Storm Statue, and Jazz is going to take a lot of damage, And but he's going to get out. Like, what? Ha he's oh. actually going to dodge the Lightning Ball. That was actually incredibly close. That was good awareness. So he's not going to get fragged there. Like, once they get their damages, like, they're they're already surviving the initiations. Like, imagine once, you know, you know they do an immense amount of damage like, and really fight back and, you know, cocoon through kills. Then these team fights are going to keep doing what they're happening, but with not without oh. light frags here. This is going to be it right here. That's going to be the first blood, the three minute, 41 second mark. Just cocooned into pulse, just completely done. Nothing that the blue team could have possibly have done to get them out of that. And, but uh, they are going to maintain mid. We're actually going to see some tablets back. And uh, Dave is going to go ahead and clear that up. Dave missed time to splash dash, so he's going to take the spike dive. He's going to get cocooned up oh, and jump out. He's in a really bad scenario, and he does not have his. Oh, oh. The spike dive is going to be missed. Oh. Why? But I'd like to point out something here, you know, if that spike dive had hit, that would be really bad for the blue team. Uh, on red team here with the, the Jellies team, you've got, a, like, I feel like the red team knows that if they can get a couple of kills going and they just start stacking that damage and, you know, the spiritual cooking, they're going to be able to snowball like all hell. And they've got decent push as well, not spectacular, but, you know, piercing auto attacks and a little, and some solid structure for damage from Penny as well. There's a nice cocoon on Spade. The pulse is going to miss because it was too early. Classic. But either way, we've got not too much happening. In fact, the red team seems to have uh, sort of had the downside from that initiation, the disadvantage, uh, taking a lot of damage. They're just going to hang out behind turrets, make sure that they don't get uh, anchor hooked or something in a really terrible spot, and some defense. Lightning Ball's barely going to miss Jelly there, with Jelly with his ridiculous like triple jump on Penny. Uh, Penny's mobility is not the most fun to fight sometimes. It's just very annoying, you know, as suits the playstyle of Penny a lot sometimes. Oh, Kahoon ran right in front of the turret, but he's going to splash dash up. Actually hit both of them without taking any damage at all. So that's going to go well for him. Uh, Jelly, in the meantime, is going to get beat up by Swiggins and Coco, and he's going to have to teleport back home. Actually, she's trying to decide if she's to stay, but no, nah, she's going to go. And uh, yeah, uh, Blue Team is really doing a good job. 
Uh, uh, t taking a very hard control of mid. They're getting their abilities off as soon as off they're off cooldown, constantly poking at the red team, constantly whittling down their HP, and just doing a good job at controlling the creeps. Dave W is probably taking more red team jungle creeps than the red team has. Yeah, to be perfectly honest, they're trying to interrupt the solar boss, they're trying to interrupt the lane rotations, they're trying to make the plays. Is you know they got to be careful. They screw it up, which they have a couple of times, and gone in relatively unpunished for it. Only been fried once on the screw ups. You know we can go bad for them, but if they can keep the fine east going and just you know to keep control of that, that's there's gonna be the cocoon and there's gonna be the cloud. The blue team's just gonna choose not to take that team fight, and now they're gonna go back to rotate. Like they they know how they, these comps work is what I'm seeing here. They know not to take the 3v3 team fight because they know they're blinded. They know they're going to get against shielded opponents. But when they're but they're constantly finding the pokey splash dash, the cup, the pokey anchor dives, and the pokey lightning balls, and just trying to keep the pressure. Then there go here it goes. There's the mid contest. They're going to get incredibly low, oh, and Jelly's actually in a really bad spot. Ball. And oh, just a the, lightning ball. There's that's well, going to be a two for nothing. But oh, Jassy's okay. That splash dash is going to be a miss. They actually managed to just go in. Dave W found all the nato ticks. They managed to find the lightning ball, and so despite the monarch blessing, the excellent tornado tracking coming out from Dave W. They really secured that team fight, in my opinion. And you know, he managed to like have one person on each side of him inside that little top rockly bush. Uh, uh, so you know what I'm saying? Like, like that was so much damage that I don't think the red team expected the blue team to win to to land when they went in, and that secured that team two for nothing. They got some great push off of that. They got a level advantage. They got solar. And uh, right now, red team is actually going to be taking mid. But, okay, they, because they kind of, they did go ahead and take the solar boss. That's kind of what happened there. Uh, Dave took some damage. So now they're going back in. They're chasing red team out. And now it's going in a lot more favor of the blue team. And, you know, they pull off another play like that. Their mid control is going to be a lot harder to contest. And there's going to be another miss. Spike dive of jazz. Missing the stationary solar boss. We'll pretend that we didn't see that. Okay. Yeah, don't worry, I actually didn't because my camera was somewhere else, so don't worry. He's safe from my eyes for now, but we got some anchor drops, anchor dives, etc. coming out. Dave W's going to get cocooned, stuck in that NATO. Not going to have NATO for a while now. Jazz is super hurt, actually, but he's going to be able to get away here. The Coco DOT from Blaze is not going to be enough. You know, Easy. we're seeing a couple of pretty important upgrades here. Uh, sorry for... No, you're fine. You know, I, I, Alright, but we're seeing a couple of pretty important upgrades here. Like, we've got... And double spiritual cooking and DOT on Genji's auto attack. That's a little bit of cheap damage. Like, you know, like it, you know it stops you from teleporting. It's not the best upgrade in IMO, but it, it can still be effective sometimes. And you've got double spiritual cooking, which is going to be a lot of extra health and team fights for the red team here, especially since they don't have the most beefy characters. And then you've also got knockback. You got thunder striker on Coco as well as double damage on lightning ball. So that lightning ball is going to be. It doesn't have a super low cooldown yet, if he plans on getting that, but. It's going to be very annoying with all of that knockback, the mini stun, and it's going to do like 600 damage. Like, Indeed. Ooh, and there's the blessing coming out. We might see a big fight coming out. They, oh, he actually got that health. Uh, they could find a cocoon right now, but actually, Jas is going to have to spike dive away. Sienna Humpa is totally on point with these lightning balls. He barely misses. He always finds the lightning ball damage in a team fight. Usually hitting at least two, if not all three members. He's always doing something with it to make himself uh, being contributing something incredibly useful. There's gonna be a pulse off the jump pad, and uh, they're just gonna keep cleaning up. They didn't take like the pounce, for example, there to cancel the tornado. Like they didn't want to fight them. Like blue team is like uh, just doing really well in these uh, team fights, and despite the fact that I, I still insist red team has a much more superior comp. The blue team is really doing a good job at making these fights matter. And, but now this might not be a good fight with a whiff dash. Dave W incredibly low. He's going to manage to pick up both of the creeps. So there's going to be a lightning ball. Dave W is going to dash out. But the oh, DOT is going to be the last hit. From Genji. Wow. There was nothing that they could have done. They, you know, the attacks are piercing. You know, Sienna got the lightning ball trying to buy uh, Dave time. But, you know, that was just a, not a good dash. That was not a Dave W dash. Um, uh, and, uh... So now that's gonna be a one for nothing. Um, they're actually, they might actually take do a really ballsy run at the solar boss right fat, right quick. They are. The red team is not aware. They're not trying to interrupt it. They could totally contest this right now. But Sienna is just gonna stall. I think they figure that it is one of those moments, those things where it's like such a bad idea to take the solar boss in that situation that they couldn't, that they didn't want to 
they the red team didn't think the blue team would and I think that's what Spade was banking on. Oh, they're going to find Jelly. The entirety of Blue Team is just going to find the insta-give right on top. That's one of those incredibly synchronized kills that looks simple and quick and easy. But oh, the counter-initiation. What a lightning ball. What a lightning ball. Completely sniped. Wow, okay, like that, that was good. I want to make that a point was... about the, those two frags right quick. Oh my gosh, they're tanking this turret. Okay, so a bunch of people are like, oh, burst meta is so mindless. You just right click in at the same time, and you know, there's no counterplay. It's so simple. Getting that synchronization of kills is incredibly difficult, and I'm betting very few teams, uh, only teams like, for example, Dave, Spade, and Sienna, who, along with Ubi, have been playing together for literally years on the same team together, can, you know, be on that level where they just immediately right click on someone, they get in, get the frag, get out. Like getting three people to attack one guy at the exact same time like that is incredibly difficult to do. Like, and but they managed to find it perfectly. And th now here we go. There, the lightning ball is out, but not before Jazz can to actually take out Dave W. That's being one for nothing. Uh -oh. Jelly's gonna manage to clean it up, and now that is the complete reversal oh, of what Jazz. was going on. Jazz, why he missed another spike dive? Spade got cocooned on the uh, top lane there while well hitting the jump pad, so he was just right in the middle, just ready to be annihilated. And Jazz just completely whiffed the spike dive once again. And uh, it might, Spade might have been able to get away anyways, but that just kind of secured that. But the red team here is just kind of uh, tanking bottom here. Well, not really. They got plenty of droids here, actually. The blue team's not going to be able to retaliate to so this. There's the nice cocoon. Turret's going to go down. Spade's going to miss the anchor oak as well, but he's going to get the anchor drop on We're Silver. Different and damage for right the now. Cocoa Ball is going to miss. Silver trying to jump away here. Dave W is actually very hurt while trying to confront uh, Jazz. Going to have to be careful. Jazz might try to go in for the spike dive. Doesn't look like it. But now Spade's in a terrible spot. Cocoon might kill him, but it looks like it's going to be the pulse and the dive instead with Sieni. Oh, the cocoon from a mile away from downtown. But it's not going to be able to be uh, picked up on from the red team. Instead, trying to worry about Dave W and getting some push. Dave W is not going to land the dash on Jelly there. Does use it to kill the droids. Red team getting that Monarch Blessing healing and extra max health is just so nice for keeping them alive as well. Dave W is going to get spiked dive. He's going to have half health already. But there's the dash out. But no cocoon is going to be able to come out in order to stop that. But it's like he's actually kind of stuck on top here by himself while defending against... Uh, Jelly and Silver here, well, they're just gonna rotate out, and they're just, they're, the red team's starting to get it back, like, they're starting to run it back a bit, like, blue team's been playing really well, but they're getting, they're getting the retaliation, they're getting the picks that they need to get, and the nice cocoons coming out, the nice right clicks, and it's doing plenty of damage to the blue team here, so now they're a little more wary, and they have lost their bottom tower, so, a little more even here, Dave W's taking that solar bus, while Spade's just gonna clear a uh, bottom here, with Sieni, trying to get some poke with that Coco Ball. I mean, it is like it's 700 damage, I think. He's actually got blind on it as yeah. well, which Not is the three blind. second blind. Not back and blind. Think about how annoying that actually is to get stunned, pushed away from the fight, and then blinded, and you just don't know what's going on. But they're going to be going in. Oh, there's an, there's the whiffs. Blue team can take this fight. Oh my gosh, the health denial. Dave W is going to go ahead and take out Jazz. Now they're going to go oh, back please. in. They're going to uh, find the anchor dive, and then oh, he's going to go down. And it's Jelly has jelly. to go home. He has to heal up and get some charges. And the blue team is just going to get some amazing push of this. Dave W is going to opt to go ahead and start split laning. And uh, he's going to get that taken out. They have the lightning ball, but he's not going to get detonated because the silence actually prevents that. He actually might pick up some frags here. He should be going in. Uh, he finds the pulse, no. and that's going to be a clean one for nothing. And uh, he already has some charges. Dave W is just not paying attention. He's like, I don't care. We're pushing right now. This is happening. And he's going to do froggy G things and get attacked on and then splash dash out while getting that turret down to 50% HP. Uh, he could have potentially saved his teammates. I think he didn't want to sacrifice the push. I'm not sure if that was worth. But that bottom turret is regardless at 50%. And, you know, that's important. Yeah, that bottom turret, like, if that goes down and they can get a couple of nice kills like they have been. Because a lot of the blue team's plays here has been they play passively and they just, you know, don't die. And then they just completely just like you know they just synchronize like they just go full dbz fusion and just like annihilate like one or two people and then they manage to get some push off of that and that's how it's been going and it's been working out for them well as well so you know if they can do that one or two more times they're gonna be able to secure this game here they just got to make sure that they don't get caught out by the reds in here you've got very and i mean dead even xp and kills right now it's absolutely ridiculous just how even it is but you've oh see and he's actually gonna get caught in a cocoon i believe but or, no, actually, no, that was someone that was else. Dave. My bad. Uh, yeah. Ah. He doesn't know the side of the map, my dude. My, 
Oh, they're that, going in though. Monarch damage. Blessings pop. They're waiting now and they're gonna go in. There it is, and there's gonna be the lightning ball, and that's gonna send the white red team way back. They they were just literally outside that blessing the, for the entire duration of it. And as soon as that blessing was off, as soon as it the lightning ball came in, not uh, Jazz down, they realized that the red team was aware they were basically just no longer allowed to stay there. They were completely zoned out. And as a reward, the day, blue team is actually gonna take that solar boss. They need to hurry up on it though. It's actually gonna be time for the fight. They're that, gonna abandon they, it. Oh, not kill it. What? And they weren't AW sure what to just do. walked away and it got all its health back. And now he's trying to kill it again. He's gonna go in against Jelly though. He's gonna get these oh, are baits. He's gonna get cooned, but I don't know if it's bait or just silly stuff. But Spade's gonna take a ton of damage. He's gonna go down. The splash dash doesn't hit Jelly or anyone. I don't think that was very strange. But Sienny's actually super hurt and cocooned. He's gonna go down to the pounce. And now Dave W is by himself here, trying to go in for the big plays. There's the there's the mutant ninja worms auto attack gonna do a bit of damage to both because of that piercing as well. He's got dash damage and base nade. Oh, he's gonna get cocoon. This might be it. No, he's gonna be able to dash out and bait out the abilities as well. He has clocks on dash, so he can just go in here. He might try to do that. Is he gonna be risky or is he gonna just play it safe? It looks like he might play it safe and wait for his team, which is just dropping right now with Spade just getting back and Sienny just hit the drop ground right now. And Dave W just, you know, harassing, poking, clearing, all the stuff you need to do as a frog when you're the last one alive. But we got Spade and Sienny back to help his teammate. Jast is teleporting out, and Jelly and Silver just kind of hanging out on the top lane here. They got a super droid, you know, but Silver's going to teleport back. They're getting some upgrades that they need to get. We're seeing invisibility on a smoke screen. That's an interesting upgrade, as well as movement speed after using smoke screen. So he's going to be va very fast and invisible after using smoke screen. Like that right there, going to be able to get a spike dive onto Spade, but not quite Sienny, I don't believe. But, yeah, and you've got, and that is also going to make his teammates invisible, which has the potential to be really stupid. Like, a, a, like, and by stupid, I mean, like, you can get some really crazy and just silly plays just by catching the enemy team off guard with that invis. But Jazz is going to get stu spike dived, or no, excuse me, he's going to get dashed. And then uh, Dave W is going to get spike dived in retaliation with Dave W trying to get out. The Cocoon is going to miss Spade, but here's Jazz with the invisibility. He's not going to be able to go in, though, without taking a heavy beating and potentially death. Well, Silver and Jazz and Jelly all just hanging out. They're rotating between lanes here. Trying to catch someone out, perhaps, like, like there's Dave W, but the entire, both teams are sticking together really well. There's Silver by himself for a second here if they try to go in, but the, blue, the red team can easily rotate. Uh, we're seeing a lot of damage upgrades come out as well, like we've got a uh, Boombox coming out on to Froggy, as well as the stage of Turbo Tape, going to help him with getting kills with uh, Tornado much easier. Uh, extra damage on uh, Pounce, also very effective because it's a nice little knockback, but Sienny's going to get Cocoon, but Jelly's going to go down to the Anchor combo, but Sienny has... Not quite lethal DOT because that Getchy DOT is not too good. Jazz here, if you take a lot of damage, that spike dive is going to miss somehow. I don't even know anymore, but he's going to have to go back with Sienny being very low, with Jelly being the only one who died in that uh, exchange there, surprisingly. But blue team is a little bit hurt. Well, it's really just Sienny, and then I'm trying to get some push here. <laughs> That's Jazz with the Invis trying to make something happen. But Dave W is going to miss the dash, whiffing that dash as well as much as Jazz is whiffing those uh, spike <coughs> dives. And excuse me. Uh, Silver is going to try and maybe get the bait teleport. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to succeed with that, though. And Jelly and Jess just... You know, Red Team's falling back a little bit. They're like, they're just playing a little more... A little more cautiously now because they... You know, both teams have backline turrets exposed. And honestly, the Red Team's turrets are kind of low here. So if the Blue Team can get a solid two kills, they're just going to be able to body that bottom turret and win the game off of that. So both teams have to be very careful here, you know. Waiting for getting the poke from uh, Coco and Froggy, you know, just trying to get those pokey right clicks and with low cooldowns as well, you know, you can make something happen with that. Maybe the knockback ball is going to be able to get someone, you know, and knock them towards. But it looks like Jelly is actually going to get hit by the anchor hook as well as Jess because of the AoE with Spade. I see any hanging out. But there's the entirety of the red team with the Monarch Blessing as well as the speed boost with getting out of the hood. And looks like Spade is going to be able to miss that anchor hook, but he's going to get the anchor drop. With Dave W getting cocooned, Jazz taking a solid amount of damage. He's invis, but he's going to run away. Jelly's going to take about half his health from that Cocoa Ball. Ain't nothing to mess with that Cocoa Ball. But Penny falling back a little bit. You know, there's a, lot, a little more cautious plays here just because they got to be careful. Nobody wants to get caught out and die because both teams just have that collapse potential. Uh, looks like we got Silver gonna take a lot of damage, so Jelly's actually gonna get the kill on Spade with the auto attack, though. And we've got Sienny and Dave W hanging out on the bottom because their teammate has gone down. There's the Coco Ball, gonna do a lot of damage to Jazz, as well as the 3 second blind, because this is 3.4, which is quite insane.
with Dave W actually just hanging out on top. But it looks like Jelly's gonna take a lot of damage from that solar boss. If he if Dave W can go in, he's not gonna be able to hit a dash because Jelly decides not to go to that top lane. Sandy's gonna get cocooned. There's the solar boss dead for the red team, gonna give them some extra experience at solar. Dave W's in kind of a bad spot. If he gets chased in, Jelly's gonna miss the pounce though. But Jazz is going to only hit a little bit of damage from that spike dive. Sandy is now caught in that cocoon, but then Ooh. there's the dash. Oh, this is going to be a big initiation here, but Dave W is super hurt. He's going to get collapsed on. He's going to get killed by the pulse from Jelly. And Jazz is going to pick up the kill on Spade as well. Sandy's super hurt. Oh, that's a team wipe. That's a team wipe for the red team here. Jelly's going to get two frags during that exchange as well. Putting in the work there. Eight and three. But doing the damage that he needs to do. And... They're just bodying this top turret here, and by bodying, I mean melting it, because it is going down extremely fast with the red team all dropping now. Still another 10 seconds before any of them are really there to defend. It might actually be able to damage. win the game off this. I don't think so. They're going to do about a third of the health. I feel like they could have okay. squeezed in a bit more, but they're going to get out and play it safe, which might be the right uh, decision. But that's base exposure as well for the blue team. Bottom turret is not too hurt for the blue team. Bottom turret is very hurt for the red team, though, and... Well, any big team wipe might win the game at this point, though I'd say it's more in favor of the red team. If the red team gets a team wipe, like, it's over, they win. But if the blue team can get a couple of nice frags and push that bottom turret and then just keep pressure up, they might be able to win as well. So both teams kind of have a win condition here. They're going to take a lot of damage from Jazz's spike dive, though, and he's just he's trying to fall back. But Dave W is very hurt. Coco Ball's coming out, but he's going to go down. Jazz is going to get the kill on Dave W with Sieni and... Well, Silver chasing Sienna here with Spade uh, as well. Going to get the anchor hook, but he's going to take so much damage. He can't do that. He's just going to go down to the insane damage that Penny has right now. And, well, that, that might be the game right here. Sienna's by himself. He's got amp damage on pretty much all the time as well. Silence not doesn't have cooldown on Coco Ball. Yeah, I think this is it. This is going to yeah, be the win. Yeah, there's nothing he can do. This is going to be the win for Jelly's team here. And that's it. Victory for the red team here. Jess, Jelly, and Silver. Indeed, that that was a very interesting match, and you know, blue team did a really good job maintaining pressure, maintaining mid the whole time, and then they just had that one team fight where like uh, they uh, the red team just managed to land all the damage and just everything went basically just according to plan, and that wipe alone just kind of really sealed the fate of the blue team, and then when they got back in lane and kind of were at their last chance, Jazz just kind of cheekily did that a thousand damage out of stealth cloud. And then just the blue team was completely discombobulated. They took the team fight when they shouldn't have. They, they should have filled back. And even though that would have been getting pressure to, back to their base and letting some chip happen, I think that was better than taking that team fight there. Because there was no way they won that team fight. And because the blessing was still ready and everything, and they were already at half health. And uh, as a result, you know, look where we're at now. Uh, it was a really good game. That was really back and forth. And uh, they man, I, I think the blue team they kind of played uh, arrogantly, so to speak. There was a couple of times where they just kind of separated from each other, not like as an issue with game sense, but they were just like, yeah, it's fine, whatever, you know. And I think they, I think there were times that felt like that they underestimated the red team, and then that would lead to the red team getting frags. Absolutely. I mean, like, the blue team was doing really good in that first half of the match. They were getting the poke that they needed to do, and they got a couple of really nice, just, you know, collapse frags. Just, you know, collapsing on one one or two people, and then, well, they're dead because you have so much damage. But the red team can do that, and they can do it better and safer. So the blue team was really just outdrafted here. And once the red team got to the late game, you know, they had so many damage upgrades, that, and the blue team was playing a little too aggressive. Well, I wouldn't say aggressive, but it's just, you know, they had a lot more trouble getting a frag compared to the red team here. And I mean, looking at the kill cam reel, you can see that, like, yeah, sure, the blue team would get a kill, but then they would all be super hurt, and the red team could potentially pick up two. And it was just, it started to, it started to all come tumbling down for the blue team at that uh, second half of the match. And they were just getting killed too much, and then that team wipe kind of secured it, even if they didn't lose the base on it. It still pretty much made it very easy for the red team to, you know, pull together and take that game. Um, dude, I completely agree. Uh, anyways, that's going to wrap up our scrim show for today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed it, because I know I did. Uh, we do run every week at Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that's uh, 9 a.m. Excuse me, yeah, that's 9 a.m. Pacific. That's 5 p.m. UK time. Should always be sure to check it out, because we're always happy to bring you a couple of scrims. Always happy to do a couple of giveaways. Uh, you get to see Uberancy's beautiful locks. And, uh, yeah, oh. an awesome yes. time. Beautiful mane, all of this hair. But either way, I think that's the end of the scrim show. Actually, Pillow, do you have anything you want to add? I did want to mention. 
Uh, don't forget again, we do got the Scolder Showdown uh, coming up. Uh, signups again, uh, tinyurl.com slash Scolder Showdown signups. Uh, more information, visit our screen, our Steam group down there. And uh, I also wanted to mention, again, the Astronaut Scrim Portal. That is a great place to find new teammates. It's a great place to, if you want to get into the competitive scene, the first step is to join the Scrim Portal. Like it's, we're a really great community. We really love uh, to meet new people and you know scrim with new people on our teams and against. But and you know you gotta join the community in order to be a part of it. So all you gotta do is just join the scrim portal. You know, no ground for scrims. It, I really, really recommend it. The link to that Discord is down below again. And uh, if I were you guys, uh, everyone kind of sees it as an off time at the moment for competitive scene. Uh, you know, the doubles tournament uh, wrapped up, the Arena League tournament uh, wrapped up, and, you know, uh, the ALWB, I believe, is uh, about to wrap up this weekend, which you guys should check out, by the way, twitch.tv slash Ronimo Games. And, uh, but I just want to let you guys know, we got stuff cooking in the background, and you guys do not want to be caught out unprepared for what Rumble has for the rest of the year. And I can tell you, for our next... Big announcement, after school showdown, we're going to announce something huge in, I believe, May. So, keep scrimming. You do, yeah, you guys want to be stay, stay in practice for May, because it, it's it's very vague right now. There's a lot of details that still need to be finalized, but just May. Sometime in May, I'm not sure when, probably middle or end, not sure. But, you know, stay in practice, keep scrimming, have some fun, because there's going to be a big announcement for that but pillow has all the details for that i honestly don't know anything about it and well it's not for a while but just you know keep that on the back burner keep that in the back of your your brains and well i think that's it for the scrim show today indeed i'm gonna go ahead and confirm because i know these rumors are spiraling we are not announcing a voltar 1v1 tournament for that's not uh, for the may announcement as i'm sorry guys damn it man i had my hopes up i wanted to pull out the the sick heel bot mind strats man You've ruined my life. Not back into Hill Mind. All right, so that's it. We will see you guys next week. Thanks for coming by, everybody. Bye bye.